Hey there, David Risley here with Blog Marketing Academy. Uh, back in my office this week for the video newsletter, but I'm still going to try to record using my iPhone. It just seems really easy, and we'll see how this thing goes. So what's on the agenda for today? Um, I just hit the publish button on this week's feature post, which features six strategies on uh, basically avoiding overwhelm so that you can actually grow your business. Now these strategies are pretty core because from each of these strategies you could develop any number of little tactics. But it's a big, bit of a beast of a post. It ended up being over 3,000 words, but I think you're going to find a lot of value in that post if you haven't already checked it out. And at the end of that post, there's actually an option to download a short little PDF of 22 different time management tactics that you could put to immediate use to get more done and avoid overwhelm. But I really hope that you follow the six strategies, or at the very minimum, pick one and put that one to use. It's all about baby steps. You don't need to do all this stuff at once. And, um, you know, it's something that we're all working on. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not always perfect in all these six things either. Um, so don't feel bad if you're like, holy crap, I get all these wrong or anything like that because I'm not perfect at this stuff. But these are things that I try to put to use for myself. So that is uh, this week's feature post that you can check out on the blog. Um, in addition to that, I'm actually going to be recording very shortly here a, a walkthrough video on the Academy Business System. Now, a few weeks ago, I did a post where I introduced the Academy Business System, which is basically a, a graphical look at the structure of an information marketing business. Uh, and it happens to be the structure which guides the training that we do inside the Academy Training Program. So I'm actually gonna do a little video walkthrough where I kind of walk you through how that thing was put together. Um, and I'm going to send that out to the people specifically who opted in to uh, download the PDF of the Academy Business System. You guys will get it first, but it, I, you know, and I haven't figured out exactly where I'm going to put that. But anyway, if you've opted in for that, you will get that video in your email shortly. Um, I'm also going to be continuing on the Theory of Constraints training inside the Academy uh, for members. Um, if you have not joined the Academy, uh, this might be a really good time to do that because that module, um, it, it's really, really important. It really, it, I'm putting it early on in the training because it really frames our approach to everything else and really will al allow you to narrow in on those things which are holding you back from growing your blog or, or growing your business. It's really, really powerful stuff. Um, so that is inside the, uh, the training area. Um, one last thing is that uh, if I haven't already announced it by the time you see this video, then pay very close attention because I am gonna be doing a Black Friday um, offer here at the Blog Marketing Academy. Um, and I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I don't think I'm going to do it on that same Friday that everybody else does. And I think I'm gonna do it over the course of several days and I'm gonna probably do it a little early. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, and we'll, I'll see what we can do to make that as interesting as possible for you guys. Lastly, I wanna have the weekly video tip. And this one, I wanna to talk to you about um, how readers interact with your blog post. Um, you may notice that this week's feature post on the Academy is long. And in fact, I just said that it's about 3, 000, a little over 3,000 words. And with a post like that you, need to, that, you need to be aware of the fact that there are basically two paths that people read your blog post. Because there's two types of people. There are those people who are going to scan it, and then there are those people who are going to read it. And you, it, a lot of bloggers, uh, I find, make the mistake of thinking that everybody's going to read the post. So they will write these blog posts that have lots of text in it. Um, and the thing is, you're, you're really shooting yourself in the foot because you're ignoring the other reader path, which is scanning. The, the, the truth is, no matter if we like it or not, that a good number of people are going to scan your blog post and, and, and not read the entire thing. So what do you need to do in order to accommodate that? What you need to do is have certain things stand out in that blog post so that it will catch their eye when they're scanning. And then if you do it right, then those things that they see when they scan the post are gonna convince them to wanna read the entire thing. 
So what do you do with, for that, that other reader path where they're scanning it? Well, your, your subheadlines are very important in a blog post. So you want to make sure that your subheadlines are interesting and, and, and spike their curiosity, just like any he other headline might do. Uh, but put those into your blog post because the function of those subheadlines is to get them to want to read what's underneath it. Another thing that you can do is, is take uh, quotables or, or, uh, or tweetables and, and, and move them out of the standard flow of content and, and highlight them in some way. You could put them in yellow highlight if you want. You could put them in a little box if you want. But make them stand out from the rest of the text and, and make them so them they, are, they stand out not only visually but also because they're quotable. They're, they're something that, that people might want to put on Facebook and say, oh, look at this genius, you know. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that you may notice that I did in my last post, uh, this week's feature post, is that I took certain quotable pieces and I, and I highlighted them off to the left or the right as quotes, kind of like you may have seen in newspaper stories or in books or something like that or newspaper or uh, magazines you've probably seen this. And I, I, I've taken them off as like a bubble quote practically. So why did I do all these things? It's because it's a 3,000 word blog post and I want to make sure that the scannable people are going to see those little quotes, see the highlighted boxes, see the subheadlines, and actually want to hopefully read the entire thing. Or at the very least, just by looking at these, these pieces that I put there for the scanning people, they can still ex extract some value from the post even if they don't ultimately read the entire thing. Uh, so that's my tip for you this week uh, is to pay attention to the fact that there are two types of readers on all of your blog posts and you, you need don't make the mistake of forgetting about the people who are going to want to scan. We're all kind of inherently lazy and if we see this big blog post, this big block of text and there's no shortcut to scan it, we're just kind of kind of bounce off and not look at the damn thing. So you need to accommodate those people who want to scan it. You probably scan post yourself when you go there, so you want to make sure that when you're creating content, you make it scan friendly, all right? Okay, I think that'll wrap up uh, the third video newsletter. Once again, I'd love to see your comments below. Let me know what you think of these things. Um, they're certainly easier for me to make, which is kind of why I'm doing it. And um, I will, uh, I'll see you next week. See you soon.